Hello and welcome to the MBS show, episode number 479. I am your host, Norman Sanzo, and we got some news for you this week. So let's hop right into it. First up is the reason why the Pegasus lost their hoof feathers. In those super high detail early models of the ponies, both Zip and Pip are rocking some very impressive hoof feathers as you can see in the image above. One of the talents behind it answered why they were removed in the comment section of the post created yesterday. Granted, this was a while ago. Um, okay, let's see, uh, here we go. <clears throat> Uh, thanks, I'm glad you like it. About the feathers, it was mostly a performance issue. Sometimes the pony just act like human and use their animal legs as arms. The feather will not twist correctly and give us weird shapes on those situations. So we realized it was working only sometimes and not all the time, even if we like it too. Ah yes, makes sense. Question, how long does it take to finish from early to final design? It's a very complicated question to answer. I will say first pony took a lot until we arrived to Sunny. Then having Sunny Zip, uh, sorry, uh, Sunny, Zip was a variation from her and took way less to arrive to something we like. Earlier stages took around a year because you need to test the character in motion, shading, groom, etc. until you are sure you are in the right direction. So the general gist of it, the feather got in the way and we uh, and were hard to animate with ponies being all expressive with their arms and stuff. Uh, sounds about right. Now we need to figure out how about those hoof works. Because <laughs> they seem to grab anything they please. All right. So this is one of those really interesting things where um, if you've ever created a model or art or whatever it is, or usually vector art. Vector art are usually vector art, 3D art, or so on. I mean, um, here's the thing. Uh, when you're starting to create something, the process of getting it right, um, getting the feel, or just in general, like just making it the way that you want it to be, is a tedious process and it's hard. It can take a lot of time, effort, and also a lot of hard work. And one of the few things that animators, artists do is just get it right to the point where you can streamline the process. And especially with 3D models, it's basically you create one frame or sorry, a one model that you like. And in this case, the standard sunny model and you just carry it over to other characters. You, you got the, you, essentially what you got the base. Now you just add in some of the extra details, main colors, uh, horn, no horn, feathers, sorry, um, wings, no wings, and so on, and, and so on, and so on, and so on. And uh, <clears throat> as we see the picture above here, we see that, oh, uh, their hoofsies have uh, little feathers, which is a really nice detail when it comes to the newer generation. But uh, like they mentioned before, they couldn't really add in in because it kind of messed up the rig or it kind of messed up with the uh, whole show because something doesn't look right. And this can be attributed to when you look at generations right up. Uh, the G4, MLP G4, and their first season, there were a lot of animation errors. Um, I, I won't say that there were a lot, but there were many, and they were kind of 
there, like they they were kind of um how do I put this? They were kind of there for the memes or um the R <laughs> you're not mistaken, the HX media at the time. Well, what were they called early on? I forgot. But anyway, um when they were making the show they were trying something new. Uh back then flash animation was kind of a groundbreaking technology where animators were usually who people who did in flash animations were from uh new grounds and doing some flash motion cartoon stuff and to take it to that level was something not widely done yet but <clears throat> with that uh they they got a lot of experience and so on and they made their best so with this one here using whatever 3d program they are using at boulder media they couldn't really figure out how to um make the hoof feathers work 99 percent of the time if it's that one percent chance of a glitch happening you get some kind of um animation error but if it's 99% of the time that you'll get an animation error that's going to be that that's going to look bad in terms of quality and they decided to remove it because it's much more cleaner and much more efficient in terms of efficient for the show so yeah um that is uh for this this, this is very really interesting um one of those behind the scene concept things or uh, mostly behind the scenes this is one of those news that i really like to talk about anyway let's move on to the next topic ah we're going a bit dark or uh, a bit sad has chairman and ceo brian goldner has died at age 58 so <clears throat> we have some unfortunate and very sudden news this afternoon according to a host of sorry according to a host of regular news sites Hasbro CEO Brian Goldner passed away today two days ago he apparently took a break for medical leave which was apparently serious the information released by Hasbro didn't indicate any specifics he was with the company for over two decades and has been ceo for the entirety of friendship is magic airing as per, sorry, uh, airing as well as producing for the g4 movie and executive sorry uh, executive producer for my little pony a new generation it really makes you realize how fragile life is okay so <clears throat> uh just gonna read this quote from richard stone dart uh, we'll, okay no no that's not uh i guess that's him um uh, richard okay anyway uh since joining the company more than two decades ago brian has been the heart and soul of hasbro as a charismatic and passionate leader in both play and entertainment industry brian work brian's work brought joy and laughter to children and families around the world his visionary leadership kindness and generosity made him beloved by the hasbro community and everyone he touched on behalf of hasbro's family we extend our deepest heartfelt condolences to his wife daughter and entire family Wow. <clears throat> um uh, I ain't going to read the whole thing but just knowing that he was kind of the person in charge during the whole lifespan of my little pony was something that made you think. He, I mean this comes <laughs> how do you put this? His job is not easy. His job was never easy but it has its ups and downs um i'm just speaking from a person seeing outside and kind of understanding how 
quote unquote business works. He still has to appease the shareholders. And the Brony fandom that came in recently was kind of a shock. I would like to be I would like to be a fly on the wall to hear what was going through his mind when this all happened. Like what did what was what was he thinking? Um, was this a fluke? Was this something crazy and whatnot? And about ten years, eleven years later, like to where it is now. I I have to say that having that under your belt. Like, um, reviving a show that's, I won't say dead, but reviving a show that's not that popular to where it is now, where every Tom, Dick and Harry knows what My Little Pony is. And it being on Netflix and it being in the top 10 for multiple countries, which that, that is pretty awesome. Uh, but still, it is it is sad to hear him uh, pass on. But it's life. It's one of those things. So I'm not going to dwell on this more. So let's move on to the next one. Ah, oh, yes. And talking about ratings. <clears throat> three weeks later and My Little Pony, A New Generation, still holds a 90% critic and 89% audience score on Rotten Tomatoes. Okay. It's hard to believe it has already been three weeks since we got our new generation cartoon horses. On the fandom side, I've seen a few people that generally dislike it, with a ton of people hyping the characters just about everywhere. Unlike most kids' movies that aren't made by Disney, it looks like critics are enjoying it too, with a whopping 90% rating over on Rotten Tomatoes, with the one negative review knocking it because what bronies, uh, sorry, uh, what bothers me is that underneath all this self-conscious good feeling and empowerment, these characters were designed to be sold as toys to little girls. I don't know we were judging the movie on their merchandising potential rather than their content, but I suppose some do. So, <clears throat> here's hoping we can re uh, re re uh, revisit it, sorry, revisit this in a few weeks and see such impressive scores. It definitely deserve it. So, yay, much awesomeness. And I still haven't reviewed it yet. Yet, I just gave you guys my first impressions. Sorry, gave you guys my impressions of the movie or reactions. Yes, reactions. That's what it is. But overall, I like the movie. The, the movie was pretty okay. Um, came in with a clear mind. Like I mentioned before, um, the movie came out a few uh, came out on the twenty fourth, something like that, and I watch it on the 27th because I was busy I didn't have the time I needed to be in that um, space where I know that I'm going to enjoy watching the movie or you know just in the right set of mind when I'm watching the movie so with how to put it so with ponies here getting a pretty high score for a kids show and here's the thing when you watch a show for kids always always go in with the mindset of this show is I'm, I'm sorry I'm going with the mindset of I am going to judge the show by its own merits uh, be them with the merchandising or with the music or whatever it is uh, I am going to watch this show for its own merits be it good or bad I will judge it on its merits so 
when I watch Pong, um, the Dune Generation, I was pleased. I had a lot of questions about the universe and how what happened because it's as a fan I've been following everything so obviously when um when a pony comes to screen oh there's a toy of that there's a toy of that I mean come on have you not watched um let's just say G.I. Joe or Transform Transformers is a better one so have you not watched Transformers and then thought to yourself Oh my god, oh, that Optimus Prime looks really good. I wish I could buy a toy of it. Or something like that. I mean, sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Or, oh, I wish there was that version of the toy. I mean, that would be cool. And yeah, I mean, it's merchandising, marketing or whatnot. And yeah, the, whatever it is, man. But ponies... Some of us know that, yes, toys are going to come out, but some of us are very picky and particular with what we want and like. So, for me, okay, I, I, I kind of am digging Zip. Zip is kind of really cool and awesome. So, Zip is the sporty Pegasi, right? I forgot. Man, I'm bad with names. But anyway, um, I'm kind of digging Zip. So, if... There's a toy of Zip. I'm thinking like, okay, um, how how does it look? What does it, uh, how how is it going to look? Uh, does it have hard main or brushable main or whatnot, and and so on and so on and so on. So, I'm going to be very particular. So I won't buy everything I see, because if I were to get a figure, I would want to have something like this. Oh boy, I do not want to zoom in. Maybe maybe I do the huge camera thing for you guys at home. Yay! So this is a Funko Vinyl? Uh, vinyl Mini, I think. And it's also glow in the dark. So this is one of those things that I really want. So yay! Um, yeah, this is much better. So yay! Much awesomeness. Much, much, much cool for me, but uh, I'm not 100% sure if G5 are going to have those kind of things. Oh, I, I really should clean you up. <clears throat> anyway. Uh, okay, let's go to the last news. And last news is... Ah! Thunderbird Entertainment listing for possible 44-minute G5 specials and 23 for the current pipeline. The parent company for Atomic Cartoon released a PDF of those websites showing off their current pipeline for upcoming projects released and included a whole mountain of pony with 4 times 44 minutes and 23 times 22 minutes listed for content. Unfortunately, we can only speculate what that uh, what actually that means. Uh, we know we are supposed to get one forty-four minute special sometime before the series later in the year, but we didn't expect four of them. Hopefully more information becomes available over time. But now we can at least expect to get a whopping six hundred and eighty-two minutes of generation five ponies in the future. Considering how successful the G five movie seems to be, it's no it's not surprising <coughs> at all that uh, that they are going all out this time. While we, uh, while we will let you know, uh, sorry, I, I, uh, we will let you all know most of the reveal. Reveal for now is uh, for now. Just expect a lot of sunny, easy hitch, pip, and zip in the future. Yes. <coughs> I have downloaded the, uh, what you call this, I have downloaded the PDF, but, uh, you know what, let's, uh, pff, gosh dang it, give me a second, I, pff, where is the Thunderbird, okay, there we go, yep, 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 
Okay, here we go. Oh no. Alright. So here we go, here we go. So, uh, current pipeline. So it seems that My Little Pony has broke. Slash E1. I think E1 is that new production company. So it says, uh, 4 times 24 minutes, 23. So, like, I mean, like, we've already mm, talked about. Oh, there's um, Marvel Spidey and his amazing friends. So, um, yeah, I, I guess this company does a lot of that. Cool, 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 cool. So what this tells me is, and you know what, I don't really need that anymore. So what this tells me is that we have a lot of pony in the future. We got no idea what those specials are going to be. And we got no idea to what level they are at. And this is my, one of my concerns that I have always stated from the very beginning. Is that awesome we got Vanessa Hutchins and so on so on we got a lot of very popular voice actors who are playing the role of the characters but what would happen if when we go to tv or at least a serialized version of the show the only reason why g4 works for us in the movies and whatnot is because well most of the voice actress and actors who played the characters are professional voice actors. That's their quote unquote bread and butter. We got Tara Strong, the queen of voices in cartoons. Uh, we got Andrea Lipman, Tabitha St. Germain, Ashley Ball, and Kathy Weisluck. Uh, their whole MO has always been doing cartoons and sometimes TV shows and so on. But they're well known for their cartoons. Uh, also, we got Peter New and in the rare moments that we had did have us uh, quote unquote celebrities uh Patton Oswald and also John Delancey. But here's the thing, uh, when it comes to voicing the characters from the very beginning, it's always awesome to have um professional voice actors do it because when they go to the movies, I won't say it's much easier but it's like it's a whole it's more likely that they will reprise their role <clears throat> but with uh this one here it's going to be i feel like it's going to be the other way around where okay it's awesome they're going to play their roles in the movie and then when the 44 minute special comes out probably they reprise their roles but when it comes to the 23 um uh, if, oh, sorry. When it comes to the series, uh, probably they won't. Probably Hasbro couldn't pay their um, fee or appearance fee or pay, pay their price for whatever they want. So we, we might get a replacement voices, which kind of really how to put it. It kind of really breaks the immersion of the show or breaks the immersion of the characters you you kind of know the voices like you, you've seen sunny and that's her voice you've seen hitch that is his voice and then uh you see um who um easy and you know her voice and so on and so on and so on uh, the same thing as when you see twilight oh that's her voice uh, and when you see Fluttershy and so on. So when when it comes to this, uh, I'm on a wait and see kind of thing where movies awesome, let's see how the series goes because they might replace their voices with um T V versions, that's the thing. And an example of this feeling that I'm feeling right now is that uh watch any fan project watch any um, project that are that are fan fan work something like the ace attorney cross my little pony thing or the um what whatever animation that they are i mean they're out there i still think um double rainbow still i think it's still out there probably but that's the thing um you get that's the feeling i'm feeling where i'm already used to how 
twilight or fluttershy sounds, suddenly hearing somebody else do the part. When it comes to fan work, I don't really mind because budget. But when it comes to um, big company like Papa Hasbro, they have the money, but they also want to make a profit. Eh. And with that, that is the news for this week. So let's move on to the next topic. And the next topic is what have I been doing with my week? And uh, my week has been pretty okay. It's not that amazing or full or whatever it is. It's just one of those weeks where um, do do work, play a bit of games, and so on. Um, one of the few things that is notable is that I recently bought Metroid Dread. Yes, that game that is very... I, I don't know. Um, for me, it's kind of popular. A lot of people I follow in the YouTube space uh, played it but I, I got no idea about the rest of the um, gaming community and whatnot I bought it but I haven't played it yet like I mentioned before <laughs> uh, my uh, the, the switch that I I won't say I have um, I'm sharing a switch so currently the switch is with a friend and he's playing another game so i'm just letting him play it first because well if i don't play it now i can always play it later and i kind of have um a lot of other pc games to play i have a playstation 4 yeah i have a playstation 4 that i play like what i mean there, there's a lot to entertain me also there's also magic the good ring and dungeons and dragons so yeah, there's a, there's a lot there. So honestly, there's I'm not in a rush. And with that, uh, let's wrap things up. If you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at thembshowgmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at MBS Show, and my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. Uh, also, please subscribe to us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date. And also Stitcher Radio and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on PanduLive.com. Links are in the show notes. Also, do subscribe to the Review and Discussion podcast on iTunes and Stitcher Radio. Over there, you can catch me and Totera reviewing the Pony episodes, comics, special movies. And sometimes we like to do other things other than ponies. And those are cartoon comics, animes video games, and movies, yes. Uh, j just as a reminder to you folks, um, reason why Terra is not around for now is that Terra just got hitched. Congratulations, woo! Uh, I'm sure when he's back, uh, we can ask him all about the wedding ceremony and whatnot. But for now, I'm just going to let him do his thing and, you know, enjoy his quote-unquote honeymoon if he's not done yet. But still, I, I, I'll try and see what what he... <laughs> I, I'll try and see if he's available and whatnot. Mm. Anyway, um, if you'd like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash mbsshow. With every support, you get a week's early access to review and discussion podcasts, exclusive and deleted content. And a huge thank you from me. Talking about the thank yous, I would like to thank Lucky Knight, Jeffrey, Master of Lag, and also Tristan. Thank you so much, guys. You are great. So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo, and I'll catch you guys next week with another fun episode of the MBS Show. See ya.